When planning your next vacation, how about considering a trip to India? You'll be amazed at the vast diversity of cultures, languages, cuisines, and customs that make up this country, unlike any other on the planet. The best part is you won't even require a translator like other Asian countries, because everyone speaks English. There's the mystical and spiritual side of India too, a country that gave us yoga and one of the seven wonders of the world, the Taj Mahal, the number one pick on our list. Believe me, India is one whirlwind ride of a lifetime. And let's not forget that it has one of the richest histories in the world and some of the most incredible natural beauty on earth. The best part, with your dollars, India becomes cheap. Here are the 15 reasons India is like another world. Number 15. India has six seasons. Staying in the plains of India, you may wonder what exactly are we talking about here? It's just hot, hot, hot. But traditionally, India has six seasons. According to the Hindu calendar, there are six seasons in India. Chronologically, these are called Basant Ritu, or Spring, Grishma Ritu, or Summer, Varsha Ritu, or Monsoon, Sharad Ritu, or Autumn, Hemant Ritu, or Pre-Winter, and Shita Ritu, or Winter. The most important season in India is Spring because that is the harvesting season. Agriculture in North India especially is a mainstay of millions of farmers who mark the coming of spring with celebrations and the festival of colors also called holy. Harvesting crops is a celebration in itself and spring is considered the season of fertility. Speaking about many seasons, India is a regular tower of Babel. Keep watching to find out why. Number 14. There are more than 1600 languages in India. If there is one thing confusing about India, it's the hundreds of languages in the country. India is divided into 22 states, and every state has its own language. Can you beat that? The country is a regular Tower of Babel, with languages like Bengali in Bengal, Oriya in Orissa, Marathi in Maharashtra, or Tamil in Chennai. Among the 1600 languages in India, only 122 are classified as major languages. But hey, and this is really gonna flabbergast you, India is the only country in the world that doesn't have a national language. Number 13. English is one of the two official languages of India. While Hindi is considered the official language of India, people down south may not even speak it. But don't let that confuse you, because you won't have a hard time at all. And you know why? That's because English is one of the two official languages in India. And if two Indians met, one from the extreme north and the other from the south, they most probably will end up speaking English. How about that? Everyone speaks English in India, and the country is the largest English-speaking nation in the world. Speaking about languages, Every religion on earth can be found in India. Carry on to the next point to find out more. Number 12. All the world's major religions can be found in India. India is home to almost every religion in the world. Hinduism is the main dominant religion of the country, followed by Islam and Christianity. There are also other religions of Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, Zoroastrianism, Judaism, and Baha'i. It may surprise you to know that India is home to a sizable Jewish community, with a particular tribe existing in Manipur, in northeast India, called the Ben Manash. The tribe claims direct descent to one of the lost tribes of Israel, who were expelled by the Assyrians almost 2,300 years ago. In 2013, the state of Israel allowed a mass exodus of members of the tribe to join families already living in Israel. Number 11. Some of the world's most famous celebrities were actually Indian. Did you see Gone with the Wind? Now that was one heck of a romantic movie, and wasn't Vivian Lee gorgeous? but the two-time Academy Award winner wasn't as American as you think. She was born in the beautiful hill station of Darjeeling to an English father and an Anglo-Indian mother of Parsi parentage. Take Merle Oberon, another Oscar winner and star of Wuthering Heights. She too was born Queenie Kelly in India and was raised in the city of Kolkata in West Bengal. Sir Cliff Richard was born Harry Webb and raised in a small lane in the city of Lucknow where his mother worked as a matron in the La Martiniere School for Boys. The family moved to Kolkata where they lived in an area called Dobson Lane. Number 10. Freddie Mercury of Queen was from India. The most famous celebrity of them all is none other than Freddie Mercury of Queen, who was born Farooq Balsara, a Parsi. Although Freddie was born in Zanzibar to Parsi parents, he was raised in Mumbai then Bombay. Freddie studied in the St. Peter's School Panchgani where he learned the piano and started his first rock band, The Hectics, at the age of 12. The family moved back to Zanzibar, from where they immigrated to England, and the rest is history. Number 9. It's the largest vegetarian country in the world. While the world is just learning the benefits of going vegetarian, the majority of Indians have been vegetarians for centuries. In fact, it is a way of life, 
and India has the lowest per person meat consumption in the world. This is most probably because 80% of the population are Hindus, who revere the cow as a holy animal. But hey, that's not stopping many from enjoying a juicy tandoori leg or shish kebab. You got to admit, while India is predominantly vegetarian, the country has given the world some gobsmacking dishes to die for, like chicken tikka masala. But you know what? If you go into McDonald's in India, you will find a Mikalu Tiki vegetarian burger. Number 8. Kung Fu originated in India. Yes, you heard that right. Did you think it was Shaolin all along or Bruce Lee? No way, man. Martial arts originated in India and was based on a South Indian martial art form called Kala Ripayatu. It included leaps, jumps, kicks and throws just like Kung Fu, including the use of weapons. The South Indian martial art form dates back to 300 CE and was basically taught to visiting monks for self-defense. Chinese monks learning the art took it back to China where as usual the country made a copy and called it its own Kung Fu. According to one Chinese abbot at Shaolin, the man responsible for taking the martial art form to China was an Indian Buddhist priest, Bodhidharma, who traveled to China. The art form was developed in Chinese monasteries like Shaolin. Number 7. You won't find toilet paper in toilets. Yes, if you're planning a trip to India, especially in the smaller parts of the country, then carry your own toilet paper. Well, every store and shop also stocks toilet paper, so you won't find a lack of it. Unless you're living in a starred hotel, most toilets in India won't have toilet paper. They may have an attached bidet, but that's it, because Indians don't believe in cleaning themselves with paper. They consider it unhygienic, and hence the bidet reigns supreme. Number 6. The world's most beauty pageant winners. Get this straight. India has more beautiful beauty pageant winners than you can imagine. It's not called the land of beautiful for nothing. The very first Indian beauty contestant to win a pageant in India was Rita Faria, who won Miss World in 1966. From then on, women from India who have won Miss Universe and Miss World are Shushmita Sen, Aishwarya Rai, Diana Hayden, Yukta Mukhe, Priyanka Chopra, Lara Dutta, and the recent Manjushri Chilar. India churns out beauty winners by the dozen and is on par with Venezuela for the most winners in international beauty pageants. Number 5. India has more festivals than you can think of. The number of religions in the country obviously makes it the country with the most festivals, and not all are religious. There are traditional festivals related to the culture of a state, too. Among the festivals of India, the most famous of all is the Kumbh Mela, which, believe it or not, is visible from space. The Kumbh Mela is held at four points in the Ganges River and is on the list of UNESCO's representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity and is considered one of the largest peaceful gatherings in the world. The largest attendance of the Kumbh Mela was 30 million people on the 10th of February 2013. Lower to the east in Bengal, the celebration of the mother goddess Durga is observed over a five to six day period and you know what's the best thing about it? Holidays. Yes, employees are all given four or five official days off for merrymaking and worship. Number four, highest railway station in the world. Now the highest railway track in the world is the Bilaspur Manali Ley Line along the India-China border. Once completed at a height of 17,582 feet above sea level, it will pass Talang La Station that is also set to become the highest railway station in the world. The Indian Railways will also use aircraft-like pressurized coaches in its trains passing through the area so that passengers will not face breathing problems on board. Number 3. The network of lunchtime tiffin is a case study in efficiency and planning at Harvard. In the city of Mumbai, India, every day, Dabawalas, or lunchbox delivery men, will go about their daily routine of collecting lunches from people's homes to deliver to employees working in offices throughout the city. Lunchboxes are picked up late morning and delivered by train or bicycle. Meal suppliers also use the Dabawalas to relay home-cooked meals to customers and back. Each Dabawala may be delivering at least 20 to 50 lunchboxes and between 175,000 and 200,000 lunchboxes are moved each day. But you know what's amazing about it? There is never a mistake in deliveries. The entire system is one bustling network of efficiency using only human memory and a paper color coding system to identify the destination and each recipient. In 2010, Harvard Business School added the case study, the Dabawala system, on time delivery every time to their compendium for its high level of service with a low cost and simple operating. Number two, dinner for a dollar. In India, you'll always have enough cash because the US dollar to Indian rupee exchange rate is something to rejoice about. You could get a meal for a dollar. Indians cannot do without their meals and because of that, every commercial zone is lined with wholesome street food. This includes a fantastic variety that comes as cheap as it can get. Heck, one good street meal consisting of most probably one main dish with a staple 
will cost no more than 75 cents to a dollar. Number one, Taj Mahal. You've most probably heard of the Taj Mahal and no, it's not Donald Trump's casino in New York. India's Taj Mahal is one of the seven wonders of the world, but you know what? It's a tomb. As beautiful as this marble structure adorned with precious gems looks, it's actually a mausoleum. It was built as a tomb by the Mughal emperor Shah Jahan for his deceased wife Mumtaz, whom history says he loved very much. But then again, he also had two more wives. The Taj Mahal was built in 1632 on the banks of the Yamuna River in Agra, Delhi, and houses the tomb of both Mumtaz Mahal and Shah Jahan himself. If you're wondering about the cost of the Taj Mahal, well, it's estimated that the cost would have worked out to $827 million by today's standards. So how was this incredible journey through India? What did you like most about it? If you like this video, then give it a click to subscribe to our channel.